Hi everyone. Oh, <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> well, nothing's gonna be more exciting than that. But today we are taking a look and reviewing Marvel Dice Throne. And um, Marvel Dice Throne. And uh, Marvel Dice Throne. And um, just Dice Throne in general. <laughs> It's a lot. It's too much. It's too much, but it is also uh, a lot of fun. And I was pushing back against the Dice Throne train for a little while. It was on Kickstarter and I thought it was too expensive for the price and I still stand by that. But I will also tell you that Marvel Dice Throne and Dice Throne in general is just a really fun game with a few caveats. Now, since people had been talking about Dice Throne for so long, I picked this up when I was at Breakout Con for 20 bucks, somebody was selling it for cheap. And this is season one. They also have season one re-rolled, which includes two extra characters, making the character total eight. There's six characters here. Uh, and then they have season two, which also has eight characters. And then they have Marvel Dice Throne, which also has eight characters. And they do also have Krampus versus Santa, which now that I have all of these characters, I know I don't ever need, but yes, I want them. <laughs> I do, and I, and I will probably grab them if I get a chance. Or just send them an email and be like, hey, can I, uh, you want me to review Santa vs. Krampus? Just so I can get my hands on the free copy because I want the characters. And, and that's kind of the essence of this game is that you definitely don't need all of these characters at all. Uh, and we'll talk about that in, in a second, but they are pretty much across the board fun. So regardless of what you get, I, I haven't played season two, but I assume season two's characters are equally fun. I think regardless of what you get, you can just get one set, one little pack. You can even just get a pack of two uh, and still have a good time. But I'll give my recommendations for purchasing at the end of the video. First, let me tell you a little bit about Dice Throne if you haven't played it before. Dice Throne basically is a one versus one Battle Yahtzee. That's how I like to refer to it as. Battle Yahtzee. You're gonna have a character and you're gonna have a number of health points. You're gonna have 50 health points and on your turn you will roll the dice. You'll roll a bunch of dice up to three times and then lock in what symbols you want to keep and you're trying to match up different symbols which will trigger effects on your board. So Thor, for example, if you roll five hammers, you then get to deal seven damage. If you roll four hammers, well, you only get to deal five damage. And the whole point of the game is to whittle your opponent's health points down to zero before they knock you out. In addition, each character will have a deck of cards and on each turn, you'll draw a card and gain what is referred to as a combat point. And you use these combat points to purchase the cards. And the cards can either upgrade your existing abilities or provide one-time bonuses like changing a dice to a six. Because if you roll five sixes, well, Yahtzee, you get to unleash your ultimate move. That's it. That's the game. Just wail upon each other back and forth. But where the interesting part of Dice Throne happens and why there are so, so many characters is because each character is different. Each character comes with its own custom dice. Each character, more importantly, comes with its own custom board, which shows you what happens when you trigger certain symbols. And so in that, each character will have a fairly distinct play style that you have to figure out how to optimize it while punching your opponent over and over in the face. Uh, or if in Thor's case, for example, just throwing your hammer back and forth at them for one damage each time it hits them. Each character will have these little sheets attached to them or perhaps different if you have an older version, but it'll show you the different special tokens that you're able to get and what those special tokens do. So on my turn, I might deal seven damage and I might also get a special token that I can use to protect myself when you attack me. Or I can use that when I'm attacking you to deal extra damage or to do a special ability that swaps your dice for my dice, which makes you rolling symbol patterns a lot more difficult and you have to go for number patterns instead. That's basically dice thrown in a nutshell, but it is a very simple premise and it is just so fun for what it is. And I think the key to Dice Throne's fun factor is twofold. One, the games never last that long if you're playing with just two players, which I would recommend only playing this at two players. And I'll get to that more in a second in the sort of the negative aspect of it. But the games play very, very quickly. And so quickly that it's easy to say, ah, 
Well, you want to swap characters and just have one more game? See if my character is the stronger one in this combo, or see if I'm really just the dice thrown champion of them all. And so the fact that these games can be so quick makes it accessible and makes it never overstay its welcome and never slog on for too long. And that in turn keeps you coming back because you're thinking, oh, well, maybe I want to upgrade this ability this time, or maybe I'll draw this card this time. And you never get to the point where you've seen it all and you've just maxed out. You have to have these choices where you make these choices specifically to impact this quick back and forth, because it is quick uh, if you're playing with two players. The other benefit is the variation. The variation that the game plays exactly the same, except that you need to learn each character's individual strengths is really fun. And I think I'm gonna put out, I'll probably film it after this, I'll put it out later on this week, uh, a video ranking at all the characters that I've played because I just want to do that. I just want to do that and I want to see what you rank them at if you've played them and uh, compare results and see which characters we all like the best. Because I just think that would be fun for me to do, so you're going to be forced to sit through it and give in to my whims. No, but the fact that it is, it's almost like Smash Bros in a way. You know you've got a B attack and an A attack and a B sideways attack, but it's about how you master and use those in combination with your character that really makes it fun and unique and interesting to approach again and again. Now on to the negative. This is a two-player game. I've said this before, I speculated this before, and now having played this uh, at two, three, and four player counts, I can say definitively, this is a two player game. I would never want to play it at anything more than two. Three was fine in a free for all, but everyone who I've introduced this to at the two player level has enjoyed it immensely. Everyone who I've introduced this to at the three to four player level has said, ah, it was fun, but I'm not so sure about it. And I think that is solely dependent upon the player count because in a two player game, it's back and forth. I'm attacking you, you're attacking me, boom, boom, boom. I usually will have a defensive role. I'll always be invested in what you're doing. There isn't that downtime in between turns as you look on your sheet and try to figure out what your tokens do and et cetera, et cetera, because you're always engaged in what the opponent is doing and you always know that the attack is gonna be directed to you. But at a larger player count, in a three player, there's a, it's a free for all mode and in a four player, it's a two versus two team mode. There's just so much downtime or there's no guarantee that you'll get to participate in the action. So in this three player mode, generally they say, oh, you can roll a dice for your targeting phase and whoever you roll, whatever number you roll, that person gets hit. And that just feels so random and arbitrary to me that we instituted what I think is either um, an official errata or should be, whereas if you're playing a free for all mode, if you attack the player with the highest health, you get to draw an additional card. So it basically determines that you're always attacking the person who's in the lead, keeps everybody balanced, makes a lot of sense. Even with that, you still get down to the end where it's kind of a kingmaker situation and you don't feel as satisfied winning when it's the other person who just kills the third person and themselves in the process and you just walk out on top just because of the turn order. It doesn't feel like you have as much agency in that regard because you've just been rolling dice and you just happen to come out on top because of the numbers. The same with a four player game in the 2v2, our game was done in seven turns. So we went first, we won, and our game finished in seven turns, which means that the person who was in fourth position, the person who was playing Thor, because in a 2v2 game, the player one would go two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's what would happen. He only got one turn. So this game lasted like, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes, and this person got to play one turn. Whereas in a normal game, he would have played three turns, right? The extended amount of time and the added amount of time that happens in these larger scale games is just unacceptable for what it is, and it does make it overstay its welcome. If you are not going to be playing this at the two player count, I would not recommend it. If you have four players and you wanna play Dice Throne, perfect, make yourself a little tournament, have a 1v1, 1v1, and then the winners face off and the losers face off for third place. Do it that way, other than pairing up together. Everyone still kind of had fun, but it wasn't what it could have been and what it, and it wasn't what this actually has the potential to do because it has a lot of potential and it is something that I was sort of my highlight of the summer 
Um, dice Throne Regular was my highlight of the, of the summer. I was away on a contract and, and I brought a bunch of games. This was my favorite one that we played throughout that contract. It's this two player head to head, not a card game, but. So it's just like Duel Monsters. Hey. No, not like Duel, Duel Monsters. My game is nothing like Duel Monsters. Let's prove it then. My game uses dice. Because it was so fast and so quick, that's why, that's why it really drew me to the table and made me excited. And so when the op games reached out and was like, hey, we're now sending Marvel Dice Throne to Canada. Are you interested in reviewing? I was like, haha, yes, of course I am. I was gonna review Dice Throne season one anyway. I will happily take more content for a game that I do enjoy. And so I've played through all of these characters now and they're all fun. And I think that's also a really nice testament to the game is that each character is fun. Some characters are a little bit more complex than others. Uh, and let's get into Marvel Dice Throne specifically because chances are you'll see this in stores and not this one because you'll likely see the season one rerolled. Because it is this 1v1 player experience that we have established now, and since I've said it, it is established and it means it's that forever, you could just get a pack of two and I think that is also why Dice Throne sells these things in packs of two. You'll see the season two broken down into these little packs of two because they know that's all you really need to play the game. However, my personal recommendation, if you are interested in Marvel Dice Throne, is to go for the base box, which has Scarlet Witch, Thor, Loki, and Miles Morales Spider-Man, instead of picking up one of these two things. or without picking up one of these two things either. I, I, I also think that these four characters are much more interesting than these characters as well. So I think it's great that they've put them into this box because they've given you the best ones, really. And then if you are interested in expanding, uh, Captain Marvel and Black Panther both are have a complexity level two. All of the Dice Throne characters have a complexity level, which will tell you if you should start with it as a beginner or if you're comfortable in board gaming, none of these should be too overwhelming, but some of them are a little bit more difficult to get the hang of than the others. But so Captain Marvel and Black Panther, for example, are just all about dealing damage and building up damage. That's, that's their whole shtick. They're fun to play, but that's their whole shtick and it's nothing too, mo too more complicated than that. Whereas Doctor Strange and Black Widow are both in that upper complexity, Doctor Strange being at number five and Black Widow being at number four. And it shows, Black Widow is all about getting all of her upgrades on the board, which is kind of a neat tech, and Doctor Strange is all about getting these additional spells to add to his roster. Anyway, if you wanna know more about what each character does, I'm gonna go through that more in breakdown when I do my ranking video. For this one, suffice it to say, all you need to really consider picking up is this, or if you can get an older copy of season one rerolled, I would opt for this as well. Again, the amount of dice thrown that I have is objectively too much. It is, I don't need this many characters. I really don't. Am I happy to have them? I really am <laughs> because it's a fun system, but you don't need to get everything. I think you can explore these characters and I think these characters will have enough longevity that they're not one and done. They're fun to keep on playing, even at the barbarian level, who's a level one complexity and is literally just, how much can I punch you in the face? It's great. Can I punch you very hard or very, very hard? That's the question. So yeah. That's pretty much it about Dice Throne. Those are my thoughts. It's a 1v1 player, that's it. Don't get everything, but I do think it is worth trying the system out, especially just to have a game that you can pull out, not think too, too hard, but still have some interesting strategic decisions and just roll some dice and enjoy the fun of rolling dice. If you've ever enjoyed rolling dice and think a battle chipping away at each other's health points might be fun, I definitely recommend checking it out and getting something that has like four characters in it, more than enough for variability and switching things around. And then you can decide down the line if you want more or if you're comfortable with what that experience offers you. This gives you six in it. And honestly, if I hadn't had the opportunity to grab these for review, I wouldn't have been purchasing them. <laughs> I was very satisfied with getting this for 20 bucks. I also think this was like 50 bucks regular. I think this is 50 bucks now, something like that, at Canadian. Obviously your mileage will vary depending on what store you go to, but getting this for 20 bucks was incredible. And 
I think I would have been satisfied getting this for like 50 bucks as well because the experience is so fun and having a couple characters to swap in and out is fun. So it's nice that you that there is this option of a four pack, uh, which I think is kind of the sweet spot. Four to six characters is all you need. You certainly don't need 14, but here I am and Dice Throne, if you wanted to send me more characters to talk about, well, I would be happy to make an updated ranking video. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I give this unequivocally the seal of distinction. It's a fun game. It, it really has been a blast to play and I've enjoyed every one of my games, even the ones at those higher player counts, which I think are not optimal. And I enjoyed myself the most. Yeah, I think it's great. It is worth noting that I tried this with my girlfriend Renee and she hated it. She hated it so much that we stopped uh, like four turns in because she said, this is dumb, I don't get it. And she did it just didn't, didn't like how many decisions there were on the board, which I didn't quite get, but I think it's worth mentioning as well that it's not going to be a home run for everyone, but if it sounds fun to you, I definitely recommend checking it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. My name's Chris George, and uh, oh no, I don't have a catchphrase. But if you're ever feeling down, grab a 2 by 4 and spank an image of Thanos all over your leg. I was told I was getting too predictable. I gotta switch it up. <laughs> Vanish me.